Avengers Campus has been open nearly three years, and it seems that most Disney theme park fans kind of agree that thus far it's been a bit of a stumble. But there's one part of Avengers Campus that I cannot stop thinking about, and it comes from this building right here where we were promised a e-ticket attraction or what you would call a premier attraction that would exist in this building where we'd get to go on an adventure with the Avengers. When I saw the concept artwork, I could tell that Walt Disney Imagineering was taking a swing at something truly innovative and imaginative. So friends, my dying desire to know took me on a wild goose chase of spending one evening looking over 10 years of Disney theme park patents. And I think I have discovered the patents for what this ride's technology was scheduled to be. And I have a couple of theories on why it's not happening. And that is what we're breaking down today. But first, let's get into the why I believe this was canceled. And then we'll break down what the three different versions of technology I found that I believe could be for the missing Avengers e-ticket attraction version one. If we look at a timeline, 2019, Avengers Campus is announced and we see two images of artwork for this upcoming third attraction. And then in 2001, the land opens and uh, there's no real announcement on when we can anticipate or expect the missing attraction. And then at D23 in 2002, we would learn that the plans would change and these pieces of concept artwork that I'm obsessed with were scrapped. And instead we got King Thanos and the multiverse which honestly seemed a little bit lazy to me. But King Thanos isn't the only one who changed because when this ride was originally announced, it was announced under Bob Iger's leadership. Then suddenly King Thanos shows up in the middle of Chapik's run. Now we all know Chapik liked to cut back. I do find the leadership change is very interesting as that's when the ride seemed to change. And now that Bob Iger is back at the helm, he always talks about avatars coming or Josh Tomorrow talks about six $60 million, enough land to build seven more Disneylands. They talk about all of these things, but what they never talk about is what's happening right here. But possibly the ultimate kiss of death to this project is when it was announced that they would open up the gift shop where guests are supposed to exit through the gift shop after riding the attraction. Oh, the store showed up, but no attraction. But friends, I have so many questions regarding this. Why did the ride change? Was it too ambitious? Was it too expensive? Expensive? Like why did they change somewhere in the middle and why did they feel like they had to tell us? Is the King Thanos concept an upgrade or a downgrade? Because there were a lot of cost-cutting decisions being made when King Thanos showed up at the worst D23 in modern history. When is it gonna show up and why do they never mention it anymore? It's just like this thing that nobody talks about. Like Bruno, let's break down three different possible ride systems and decide, was it too ambitious or too expensive for Chapic Economics? But as always, we will start with the easiest concept and work our way up to the most difficult. Up first is the Pendulum Swing Ride System. I don't think that it's a bad ride system. I just don't think that it's the perfect one for this particular ride, but by looking at this more basic ride system, we can understand the limitations that it has and how Disney would need something that's more technical to deliver a true Avengers level experience. Introducing our first Disney patent, the track-based swing ride with long arm pendulum. This innovative ride system offers guests a thrilling experience with three movement variables. Suspended above, the track system allows for smooth forward and backward motion while the pendulum, where guests are seated, swings left and right under controlled movement. With the addition of a rotor, riders can even spin 180 degrees for a backward ride. But the real excitement lies in the hidden features of this ride system. The track above the guests can navigate up to a 90 degree pitch, creating unexpected twists and turns in tight spaces. Imagine the thrill of perfectly synchronized twists and turns with a meticulously designed set, immersing guests in an unforgettable Avengers experience. Picture this concept in action. Imagine boarding a Quinjet where video screens set the mission. As the back of the jet opens, the pendulum ride begins, whisking guests through an urban environment filled with tight turns and stunning show scenes. Complete with practical props and video projections, Finally, as the ride concludes, guests disembark into an unload zone, while the pendulum seamlessly returns to the Quinjet loading area for the next adventure. 
If this was the ride system, my guess for it being canceled was due to low rider capacity. Where our last ride system didn't feel ambitious enough, I feel like this next one maybe was too ambitious and that could be why we haven't seen it materialize. We are looking at a vertical launch flying roller coaster. This ride system feels like a perfect fit and it would be my first pick if I didn't know our third and final option, which is pretty mind blowing. But first, let's break down our second option. This looks pretty epic and maybe its ambition is why it didn't come to fruition. Introducing our second potential ride system, the flying roller coaster with vertical load and launch. Clearly inspired by the Avengers, this ride vehicle shape resembles Quinjet-like design details, complete with an Iron Man style emblem on the guest lower chest. Let's dive into the transformation from a Quinjet to a jetpack. Guests unknowingly board onto one of three different floors, entering their Quinjet, where the mission is revealed through video projections. As the action begins, the back of the jet opens, revealing rows of seats moving backward towards the exit door, accompanied by convincing breezes from wind cannons. Guests realize their row of seats are jetpacks. Once aligned with the track system, guests transition from the Quinjet and they're ready to join the Avengers on their mission. As the vertical takeoff propels them through a portal, riders embark on a thrilling roller coaster journey through spins, dives, and tight turns, surrounded by projected Marvel storytelling. The ride vehicle can adjust to lay flat, providing a sensation of true flight, before returning upright at the end of the mission for unloading. My guess on this potential ride system being canceled was due to cost. A fast indoor roller coaster requires a massive show building to house such an epic adventure, and cheap Chapek probably thought that a King Thanos simulator could deliver a near same experience on a budget. Speaking of future plans to come, I know what one of the best plans you can make is subscribe to Hey Bricky right now and keep going on this adventure with me. If our last ride system was canceled due to limited budget, this next ride system may have been canceled due to limited technology because this is truly ambitious to use a robotic arm to move us from ride system to ride system. Wow. Introducing our third potential attraction, an ambitious Avengers theme experience comparable to Star Wars Rise of the Resistance featuring multiple ride systems aided by a robot arm. Guests begin their journey in a Quinjet pre-show, where their rows of seats fly through a showroom with the first ride system mounted above the guests, immersing them in Marvel-themed scenes. A robot arm then clips onto the back of the seats, triggering the disconnection from the first ride system. After a 180-degree spin, guests are placed on a ground-based ride system for a lower-level mission where guests will ride through various different Avengers theme show scenes. Next, a second robot arm transfers the seats onto a platform on a third ride system, revealing a hidden simulator beneath the guest's feet. This platform moves slower, leading guests into a private dome for full immersion in their own Avengers story. Then, returning to the faster ground-based track, guests are loaded into another mission, where their seats are connected to a carousel. As they ascend, a smoke effect enhances the sensation of flight, with seats gradually flattening to simulate flying as they gather their height and returning guests to the upper floor where their mission began. And these seats that are the real star here that are able to be clipped into four different ride systems return to the load area where they can begin another mission for another guest. This ambitious technology combines elements from four different patents, resulting in an epic adventure from Quinjet to Jetpack. While all three concepts offer unique experiences, this one stands out for its innovation in multi-layered storytelling. If this was the potential ride system, I would guess that it was canceled due to being way too ambitious, requiring too much new technology, and making it incredibly expensive. I would love to know which one of these three was your favorite. 
But as we know with the Disney parks, the plans change all the time. And here's how the plans change over at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, where I break down what the canceled and missing third attraction was possibly gonna be like. Ricky here from the Edge of Avengers Campus. Man, I hope this thing shows up one day.